Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another video. So, about that new choice for a singer in Linkin Park. For those of you who don't know, for some weird reason, Linkin Park recently hired a new singer, Emily Armstrong. Um, and I have heard what it sounds like. I don't know how to feel. So Emily did some songs that were just like kind of rehashes of, like, of course, as like it. So Linkin Park as a whole, the band. I'm going to say that instead. With Emily as the singer, did a lot of rehashes of what their original song, their, their old school, like, really popular songs were, like, Numb. Um, I believe they did In the End. They did, they definitely did Faint at a point. They, they did a lot of their songs. Um, and they did a couple new ones as well. To be honest, I've got a lot of mixed feelings about it. Um, Emily Armstrong is no Chester Bennington. Let's get that out of the way first. There is no way in heaven high she will ever match up to the high quality, the master perfection that was Chester Bennington. However, uh, I wanted to get that statement out of the way, but I also want to point out that just because this is the case doesn't particularly mean she can't still have the potential to be a, an extremely good singer of her own. After listening to the live performance, it was done through a recording rather than in person, which would have been really nice, but stupidly expensive. Um, I watched it over uh, YouTube, actually, and I'll admit, whenever they were doing like songs that they've already created, ones that were originally done by Chester, it felt off. Was it bad, per se? I mean, personal opinion, no, but it didn't exactly have that same vibe that it originally had when these songs were released in, like, Meteora or Minutes to Midnight. All their really, really, really good albums just... It's not the same when it's done by someone else. However, there are some stuff that I feel I feel like given enough practice, because you can kind of tell Emily Miss Armstrong is definitely partly there. She has that right feel. But there is a reason that the songs at that point in time worked so well, especially for people like Chester, uh, for, for Chester, uh, I'm not going to go off of the last name, but the reason the songs worked for Chester, for example, is just due to the fact of how, to him, it was, it's obvious at this point, but to him, it's because everything that was being sung was in his mind actually happening. I mean, for heaven's sake, let's take the song Lost, for example. Um, without going through the lyrics, when you listen to the lyrics itself, you can kind of tell they're lost in their own mindset. That's literally what the song is basically saying. They're lost in their own thoughts, uh, like negative thoughts. I'd be a little surprised if... Um, Chester didn't 
think this way. Like, in reality, outside of the music, that's just what made the use music so good. But what about Emily? I mean, she has the potential, right? I think she does. I'm sure there are a lot of people who will watch this video and go, no, you're wrong, which, you know what, to each their own, I'm not judging off of someone's own opinion. I'm basing this off of the quality of how well she sings. But there is one aspect of this that needs to be remembered, no matter whether you think one side or the other. If she's going to succeed in this, one thing has to be remembered. At this point, this is the Linkin Park legacy. The one thing about a legacy that always will hold true, a legacy is never successful unless you take a piece of what the original was, but do your own thing. Tron Legacy, for example. I know where I'm comparing music to a film, but it gives a good idea of why. As a movie itself, the classic, great film, especially for the 80s. But Tron Legacy, that was a good film too. A really good film, in my opinion. Why? What made it so successful? Well, it took characters, events, and circumstances from the classic and went, okay, well, let's still do our own thing. Let's take the premise of it, but still do our own thing. And it succeeded. Same concept here. When it comes to Linkin Park's legacy at this point, it, obviously they're still called Linkin Park and they still have to, they have to like hold up the same vibe and the same feel of music for it to feel like Linkin Park. But for it to succeed, the members of the band, including Miss Armstrong, can't particularly try to do what they've already done. They would have to do it in a way where it's like, hey, this is how we stood then. Let's take the, f like the style and add our own flair to it. Do that. And yes, it'll be controversial because it's not the Lincoln Park that it was back in the early 2000s. But it wouldn't be bad either. It wouldn't feel like they're trying to copy and paste. It wouldn't feel unoriginal. It would feel like they're trying to do their own thing with their own style, but with keeping the same thing that made Linkin Park so good to begin with. I hope that makes sense. The reason I bring all this up and this idea up, I was originally going to talk about this in a different manner, but when this came up, it was perfect for what I was going to talk about in the first place, and that is that creativity is an art. Any band, any musician, artist, creator, anything that understands this would look at their work and go, we need to perfect this. Not for the consumer, not for the people paying us to do it, but for our own self. We look at this and go, that's not good enough. We look at this and go, by the way, when I say this, I'm referring to just kind of a royal statement. We look at this and go, let's take the flair of the original but perfect it. Add more of our newer aspects to it. Recreate it, remaster it, remake it. Creativity is an art. An art that can be butchered 
if you stop caring about it in the first place. Not to throw any shade. Oh my king. Yeah, I'm throwing shade. But at the same time, I'm not. I'm not doing this out of spite or anything, but a good example of a group who is butchering the idea of creativity being an art. And we've all talked about it at this point. Shut up, phone. But to give an example, Disney. The Walt Disney Company is butchering the art of creativity. Because there's none left. Snow White. The live action Snow White. We've all said it. It's woke. It's people people on the internet have called it Snow Woke. I'm not kidding. It's funny that they do it, and it's brought new creativity to those who have looked at it and made fun of it. Disney, why couldn't you be that creative in the first place? I mean, the original phrase talks about Snow White having skin as white as snail, pale as white as snow. And they hired someone originally who didn't have that feature. Which, fine, I get you want to varietize, but create a new story then. Or if you're going to do a remake of Snow White, add a charm to it. Make it a musical, I guess. I mean, you were, they were already basically doing that in the original movie anyway, except it had to be, like, extremely short. Just do it. This would have kept the creative aspect and would have made people go controversial, but it still would have made a lot more sense. It would have potentially pulled them out of this ditch that is Disney really going woke and only caring about money. And that aspect alone, my friends, that's what ruins creativity. That's what pushes the idea of creativity being an art. Creativity being an art is a big factor. Reverting back to the example of Linkin Park, the thing we were originally talking about. I think that if they can start up some new songs, that have that same feel, that same relatability feel, that stuff like In The End, or What I've Done, had, without leaning too much into one kind of category. The end. Just staying within the category that they were originally in, but going off of their own experiences by doing so, I think that would actually help them keep the creativity. However, what worries me on that front is that they may look at those lyrics go, okay, well they like this, but let's appeal to more modern audiences and then they'll go woke. I don't think Linkin Park will do this. The creators in Linkin Park are way smarter than your people over at Hollywood. <laughs> but still it's a concern that's always going to be there creativity is an art yes but slowly but surely the world is ruining that art it's another good example of this actually this is a little bit of a shout out but it's a good example of this for those who haven't noticed the icon for this channel has changed it used to be a blood moon with two sights and so it was a Gemini sign on the blood moon, but it was my face, secondarily. But now, well, I mean, all you have to do is like look right there or right here. Big shout out to uh, high school, my high school best friend, uh, Becca, for that. I reached out to her a little bit ago, and we've been talking a bit. 
Um, I talked to her about possibly doing that, and I do owe her a bit of money for that, so I'll have to take care of that at some point. But, um, yeah, that, I told her, you know what, look at the channel and get as creative as you like. That icon is actually a second rendition of what was originally there. The original icon presented is something that's already in use. I let her know that, and she changed it up. Honestly, I'm glad I requested that change in the first place because the icon's great. It sh it has that flair. So Becca is goth. It has that flair of somebody who's goth, but it still gets the point across of what this channel is about in a small little image. And I love it. I love it. It's something I really appreciate. And that's a perfect example of the art of creativity. A beautiful example of it. And it's something that I think is starting to fall much shorter over the years. Now with all this being said, I'm going to leave this here. I give a couple examples throughout this just to kind of get the point across, but what do you guys think? Uh, do you guys think that the art of creativity is dying, or do you think I'm just going crazy? Don't answer that last half. But what do you guys think about the art of creativity? Let us know in the comments below. Um, I am actually kind of enjoying getting back into these vlogs. That's kind of why I did this instead of um, Kingdom Hearts once again. That, and I had a couple other things just kind of mashed together and I didn't find the time. Next week you we should be getting back into a normal schedule though. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Um, if you like the video, make sure to give it a like. And consider subbing to the channel because these vlogs are becoming much more frequent. I, they kind of feel like I'm ripping off uh, Moist Critical, more or less. <laughs> I'm saying that partially jokingly, but it does kind of feel like it. Anyway, yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. And we'll see you all later. Bye for now.